Okay, welcome to this video. I'm the GCSE Maths Tutor and in this series we're going to have a look at questions that can be solved that only need GCSE skills in order to solve them. So let's look at this question. Now what we're going to be having a look at is if we take a circle and we're going to have a look at this, how it's built, and then we intersect it with another circle through the center of that circle and both of those circles have a radius of 2. Now specifically for this we're going to have a look at if they have a radius of 2 what is the area of the shaded region in between them. So make some notes on this, you can pause the video, write it down, and then we will have a look at how we go about solving it. Okay, let's have a look then. So, we've got two intersecting circles, and we need to figure out how we're gonna get that area. Now, the first thing that we can have a little think about is how to actually approach this. And if we take a look at the sector, which you can see there, if I draw these two radii in, then we can get rid of that part of the segment on the outside. Now what we have drawn in the green shaded section, now we have a sector. And if we can work out the area of that sector, then we should be able to start breaking this down. So thinking about this triangle here, and if we draw this triangle in, that actually forms an equilateral triangle. Having a look at those lines, all of them are individual radiuses of the, each of those circles that we can see. So we know in an equilateral, all the angles are 60 degrees, which means if that angle is 60 degrees, then the main angle in our sector must be double that, 120 degrees. So now we know that the angle in the, in the sector, and we also know the length of the radius, we can actually work that out. We can also have a look at this triangle. So looking at this triangle here, we could actually use the two lengths there and use a bit of trigonometry to work out the area of this triangle. And that would leave us with half of the shaded area there because we would have the area of that big segment on the left. So that's how we could approach this, but what formulas do we need? So the GCSE formulas that you would need to be able to answer this are now shown on the screen. So the top formula there is the formula for working out the area of a sector. The bottom formula there is for working out the area of a triangle using sine. So if you weren't sure already and you think maybe you could now start to have a go at this, pause the video and start to have a go. Okay, so moving on. Right, let's move these out of the way. Now if we look at that sector there, we know to work out the area, we need to do pi times the radius squared times the angle over 360. So the radius is two, so that will be pi times two squared times 120 over 360. Now we need to simplify that, so two squared is four, and 120 over 360 is one third. So we could write that as four pi times a third. We can simplify that further by timesing the 1 on the top of the numerator by 4 pi, and that would leave us with 4 pi over 3. Okay, so now we've got the area there of the sector. So we can get rid of this working, and we can just remember for now that that is the area of the sector. Next then, we need to have a look at the area of that triangle. And once we've got the area of the triangle, we will know the area of the segment, or we'll at least be in a position to work it out. So let's have a look again at that triangle. So the triangle that we're having a look at, and we already know, has two lengths of two. And we can use the half AB sine C to work out the area of that triangle. So putting those numbers in, we would have a half, A and B is two, and the angle C is again 120. So putting this in, and we get a half times two times two sine 120. And a half times two times two, we could simplify. A half times two is one, times two is two. So we would have two times sine 120. Now, if you are gonna challenge yourself in this question, and you're gonna do this without a calculator, which is how I'm gonna do the working out throughout this question to start with, then you need to know that sine 100, the value of sine 120. Now, sine 120 is supplementary with sine 60. So if you know the value of sine, one, sine 60, you'll also know the value of sine 120. So you need to know your exact trig values now. Now, if you don't know that, again, I'll link a video in the description for you so you can check out how to work out these exact values without a calculator. But the value of sine 60 is root three over two. 
So we'll replace sine 60 with root 3 over 2, and we'll end up with 2 times root 3 over 2. Again, we can simplify that. We can multiply the numerator by 2, and we'll get 2 root 3 over 2, which again divides top and bottom by 2, and just leaves us with root 3. So the area of the triangle is root 3. So again, let's just keep that to the side, and remember that the area of the triangle is root 3. Now we can actually have a look back to our diagram, and we can think about how we actually get the area of that segment then. So if we take the area of the sector, and we now take away the area of the triangle, we would be left with the area of this segment. So let's put that into place. Uh, 4 pi over 3, take away root 3, would be the area of that segment. So we actually just need to think about what we would then do with that, because we have two of those segments. So in order to get the area of both of them, we would have to multiply that by 2. So if we multiply that by 2, we'd get something that looks like this. And if we expand that bracket out, multiplying both those pieces by 2, we would have 8 pi over 3 take away 2 root 3. Now that there is our final answer if we leave it in exact form, but of course you could write this as a single fraction, so we could multiply the right piece there, we could make that a fraction over 3, and we could write it like this. Okay, so either of those answers would be fine. So in terms of getting your exact answer, there it is, 8 pi minus 6 root 3 over 3, or of course the answer above. But if you want to type this into a calculator and you want to get a decimal answer, you can do that as well. So the decimal answer in centimetre squared is shown on the screen. And again, if you could round that to two decimal places, it would be 4.91 centimetre squared. But there we go, that's our final answer, and that's how you approach this question using only GCSE skills. So, I hope you like that, I hope that was interesting, but if you did enjoy that, please make sure that you subscribe now to the channel, and I'll see you for the next one of these videos.